Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, shocker, Shane Todd. Let me start again. Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd. Fun episode coming up. Before we get into anything, let's get into something. Patreon.com slash Tea With Me podcast. If you want to uh, be specific, it is HTTPS dot dot dash dash www.patreon.com slash Tea With Me podcast. Bonus content coming out of our bottoms over there. Bonus episode on a Monday called the Special Brew. Live stream every Friday. There's just there's just everything there you can imagine. Also, we have our live waterfront hall podcast up there in all its glory. Me, Kieran Bartlett, Dave Elliott. Plus, if we were to if we were to arrange something. For another podcast, say for Toxic, and this is all hypothetical, we would we would notify people in advance on Patreon. You'd have first chance to buy tickets on Patreon if we were gonna do like a live podcast somewhere else, somewhere else in Belfast. Um, so just you'll SSE see what I mean. We are sponsored by none other than Beer Fifty Two. These guys are offering a free case of eight craft beers. Oh my god. Go to beer52.com slash T and all you do is cover the postage costs of five ninety five. Sure nowadays that's a, sure nowadays <laughs> Nowadays five ninety five no that's a you get a flipping You got a one pound coin for it nowadays <laughs> To claim your free case now five ninety five you cover the postage they send you out the beers They're the biggest beer club in the world each month they send their members a big case of beer from exciting locations across the globe. <gasps> Where, man, you're just, how buzzing will you be for that? We're just from Lebanon. Glug, glug, glug. You be, they've had beers from 40 different countries, five continents. These guys aren't messing about. Pale Ale's the sumptuous stout. You can try the best beers across the world with the UK's number one beer club. Uh, you go to beer, By the way, you let them know as well what you're into, beer-wise, not fetishes. Beer52.com slash T. Get your free case now. Beer number 52.com slash T. We are also sponsored by none other... Download it up so I know what it is. By none other the manscaped.com. Now, I walked in here earlier and I had a, a package myself for my package from Manscaped. Dan showed me and I said, yeah, I think I've already got a lot of stuff. And then he points at this. And this here is a, a, a wee razor. And and in the words of Dan Quick, producer of this podcast, in case you want to bick your balls. And he's a professional. In case... Pardon? Don't say bick. Oh, yeah, because that's a... I said that. I said, Dan, bick is a rival razor firm. And he said... Oh yeah, I didn't know that. And I said, Dan, be professional. Dan said, Mike said actually, that's for if you want a razor on specific brand, your balls. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I, th- I thought we were having Warwick Davis on and he was getting himself. <laughs> his face is a, his face is a normal <laughs> Why you why would I have a smaller <laughs> These guys have everything over at Manscaped. <laughs> These guys have it all. <laughs> the lawnmower 4.0 with wireless charging technology and light, you can use that in a shower. Basically what we're talking about Manscaped. Number one in men's below the belt grooming products. It's coming into winter. All right? Don't just think, oh, I'll get through the winter with this and then, you know, come spring, I'll spruce it up down there. Go through winter shaved up, okay, for Santa. Manscaped.com, use code T with me for 20% off and free shipping. Whoa. Let's get into this episode. My guests are, I would say, the hottest new duo in local television. They are two guys with beards and dark hair. These guys are none other than Dave Elliott and Glenn Gordon, aka Psychic Glenn. They're in the they're in the building right now. Lads, come on in. Dave Elliott, Psychic Glenn. Together. Hello. Again. Again. 
Yeah. WB8 in the house. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Poetry. Okay. Yeah. Um, guys, cheers for coming on. Is it fair to say, at the minute, TV's hottest Jew? Because that, that's so. what people are saying. Yeah. I reckon so, yeah. And it depends on what way they mean hot, but I'll take David's either way. The beard. the beard. People love the beard. Yeah. You you do both have brilliant beards. And Glenn, can I just say, I don't know what you think, but see, since his beard's a wee bit of grey through it, looks brilliant, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think you know so. What I th- you know what you, you actually realize? do, you're dressed like um, Zelensky at the minute, though. Yeah, because I'm always ready to go to the front line <laughs> if I'm needed. You know, comedy, that's the thing about comedians. It's a bond, isn't it? So we're bonded together in yeah. some way. So if Zelensky calls us, yeah, we're there. Um, but what people don't know, this is a secret about us. See, when we finish recording or whether we do podcasts from together, I have a couple of fellas that, that come and they lift up my upper, upper body and pop Glenn in and then pop my upper body on. <laughs> We're just a big Russian doll. That's what we are together. <laughs> the two of us together. <laughs> who's in, Glenn, who's inside you? Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> How did it, right? Tell me, I remember, Glenn, one day, Dave called me up and he said, I'm working I'm, I'm, I'm working with a guy now. And yeah. I presumed all the stand-up oh, or... Blue top, raging. Yeah, I, well, no. I, furious. I said, who is he? I said, who is he? Because, yeah. you know, Dave and I have, have been in a, a partnership. Yeah. For, for a long, a civil partnership for a long time. Yeah. Um. So when he told me he was bringing someone new in, I was like, who is it? Is it, you know, is it Mickey Bartlett? Is it Paddy McDonald? Who, who is it? And he said, it's Psychic Clan. So how did this come about, and did you already know it was going to happen? Well, I didn't know it was going to be on a podcast because I'll tell you, Sex and the City, they made a new series, and it was called And Just Like That, and it was all about Kerry going on a podcast. And just as it came out, boom, I was on this podcast, and I said to my auntie, say, but it was Aaron Butler, really. Aaron Butler. Yeah. <laughs> He said, do you want to do a podcast? <laughs> and he said, am I going to get roasted? I would have done it anyway, but he said, no, you'll be fine. <laughs> a video version for sure. Um, so, so you had Glenn on your podcast. Yes. And did you feel something? at Because no. we're going to get in that. We're going to talk about feelings and, and, and you know, <laughs> sp- sp- spiritual mind things. But did you yeah. have a feeling when Glenn was My old? initial feeling, because Aaron said, look, this is, why is Aaron Butler for sale? Why does he? Bu- he's book my booker. Podcast? Yeah, he's my booker of right. the podcast. So he said that there's this guy and he's doing videos on Facebook. They're what really entertaining. People love him. Um, and I did say it could be a bit wild. So just be prepared. I watched some videos and I went, yeah, this guy can't be a bit wild. And I thought if there's a man that can tame that wildness. It's me. Yeah. I got him on, and the first time we met, I was thought, oh no, because I thought he's going to tell me terrible things. First thing he told me was, cut out the sugar. Because, and I was like, you know, is that a psychic power? Ice? And he was like, either way, it works. Yeah. But then, whatever it was, whenever we just had the chat, you know, when you do a podcast with some people, you're like, oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Or sometimes you're like, oh, we have a good, we have a good rapport. And I felt, well, there's, you know, something with that. And then just through that, we became friends, and now we're doing more together. And it's just. Did you feel the magic at the time, Glenn? I felt excited at the time because it's a change from always doing readings and knowing you're a wee cunt in school and you get expelled. And it's like nobody nope. really wants to be your friend. You're never invited to fuck all. And now all of a sudden I'm here with you fine people. <laughs> so you're making, a, so you're really, like this is a chance again, mm-hmm. kind of like for that school Definitely. time. Yeah. Right. And why did you get expelled from school? Multiple things. Well, I remember in second year I did photocopy a Ouija board that I got in a, a magazine called Monster Mob. <laughs> did, 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 did you go to Hogwarts? Reaper graphics, <laughs> photocopy that and give it out to all the first years. Right. And what are you three at that point? 11 or 12. <laughs> Dishing out Ouija boards? The, the headmaster said, damn, we were dealing with the devil. As in you? <laughs> well, I took it that way. And what else? What else? You, you getting trouble um, I was just always trained and all. Right. Acting up. Right. I ended up going to Pathways. What's that? It's like a for fifth year, instead of being expelled by X turn. They took you around everywhere in a minibus and let you smoke. Yeah. So. <laughs> hey, go listen. <laughs> Fat Face want to sponsor. <laughs> this is the guy. Sign up. Drive around. Smoke a bit. All good. Like, see if you're a kid and you're like, listen, you can go to school and you can do your exams yeah. or we'll drive you about the tour of Belfast. You'll see all the murals. You'll see all the hot spots, the peace walls. And you can smoke. We'll give you 20 Lambert and yeah. Butler. <laughs> you went like, on listen. the big that came and picked you up. They found you. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. where we where were you normally? Well, I normally went because I enjoyed it. Right, that sounded very much Glenn. Like they like release you like a Hunger Games thing. <laughs> they release you and then the pathways find you. Look for the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> well, they took responsibility for us. The schools didn't care. 
Dave, did you? What did you get? Did you ever mm. met you off school like proper? Oh no, I was a I, very I know good did. boy in school. Like I was yeah. uh, the. I actually once had to make myself cry because I nearly got the attention. So I, you know, I was doing this thing. You know, when you put a ruler at the end of the desk and it goes wow. Yeah. I was doing this. Like, I, <laughs> I thought a porn just yeah. started. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had it at the end of the desk in chemistry. And listen, I'm not a chemist. You know, so I was just like, fuck this. What's the point in listening? Wow. With my ruler, right? So I was wow. And my teacher said, if you do that one more time, I'm going to send you outside. And I looked her dead in the eye. I don't know what came over me, but I went, wow. I should right get outside. So she's like, you're like, you're flirting with attention here. So she sent me out the corridor. And um, shout out Mrs. Means. And I was uh, standing in the corridor and I was like, I can't get detention. I have an unblemished record here. I'm in trouble. So I spent the whole time and I was doing this, like poking my eyes and all. She came out while I was going, and she was like, what even is it you're doing now? <laughs> and it's like lunchtime detention. I was so raging because I knew she didn't let you eat your lunch when you're in detention. And I like eating. Yeah. So really I, sad. And I, she was scundered. My first att- I got detention quite a lot. My first detention, can't remember what, what I got it for, was waiting to be picked up. And someone else that had been in detention and I was kind of mates with gave me the fingers from the back of his mum and dad's car as he was driving off. And I was standing there waiting for the bus. And I gave him, you remember, to yeah. suck it. I gave him one of those. I said, hey, suck it. <laughs> the teacher was doing attention, drove past at the same time. Went, same time next week. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, yeah, I never really... I, I did go through it the odd time, but not, not too much. I was pretty well behaved. I could see you. I think Glenn was extreme in school. Yeah. I think you have this, and I'm somewhere in between, but I could definitely yeah. see you bringing in knitted stuff for teachers that you'd knitted. No, I did, I did have a day for a teacher, a celebration day. And, um <laughs> And then it's sort of almost end up in a bit of a detention. We had a te- like let's I was doing GCSE German and I had a teacher who I'd love to give us we'll just call him Herr K. because yeah, his surname started with K and people know. Right. But Herr K was a real character. Like he, he was you know, he, his room was really messy, he was a really smart guy and he would like he did like commentary on local football, but for Russian in Russian he spoke like all these different languages. The guy was a genius. So he's doing like yeah, he's double, he's, v. Yeah, Carrick in he's double Russian. jobbing, but you know, he must not have high tax bill. Just for the Russians, whoever wants to see it. <laughs> no, 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 no. He no. did the Northern Irish games and everything. Right, okay. Yeah, full so internationals. Internationals, like yeah, not just doing, just the bang. Moyola but, Park. But he, um, <laughs> so he did all that. But then I realised, like, and he was quite classic too, like he, but again, he wouldn't have been, he wouldn't have been a very strict teacher. So if you were tempted to be a piss taker, you could really take the piss. So we were like, and like, well, for example, one day, a guy I worked beside wrote Dave is gay on the desk. And he said to the teacher, he goes, look, look at this. Dave is gay, and the teacher went, Dave is not gay, you're gay! Like that, and I was like, <laughs> really, like, what do you deal with that? It's ridiculous. So one day we decided, listen, we're all feeling GCSE German here, may as well have a bit of banter, we'll have a celebration day for him. So we split up each, each group, and we're like, you bring in a flask of tea, you get cookies for him, you do artwork. So I did do artwork, and he's a big banger football club fan, right? Yeah. So I like made up gold banger and like blue and, <laughs> and yellow and made these signs. So we went in for the day of German, we're like, we're not having a lesson today. And he was like, oh no, you're a couple of weeks. And we went, no, we're not having a lesson. We're having an appreciation day for you. And he was like, whoa, wow, so, 3 p.m., so good. And we're like, that's why I feel German. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, right, so we sat there and we, he was just eating the milk and cookies and he was doing all this <laughs> in German. He said, hmm, schmeckt mir gut, yeah. <laughs> like, tastes good. And we were really Scooter? laughing. Scooter? Like, we, <laughs> yeah, we were really laughing our head off at this, right? And it was all good. And thought nothing of it. I was like, what a great period that was. Half an hour of just fun. So, so what he didn't do was say, guys, I'll be a no, professional. Yes, we need to yeah, learn. He did it and he, he really sank enjoyed in the it. So that was fine. I went on to my next class a couple hours later and a single word science or something. And then like a little girl came to the classroom, knocked the door. I was like, um, Mr. So-and-so would like to speak to David Elliott because that's my real name, right? And I had to go. <laughs> Mr. So-and-so. Uh, yeah, Mr. So-and-so. <laughs> so they brought me. And I was like, oh no, what the hell's he want? Because my ear head, like, he'd re- he's a psycho, like, right? So he brought us, and I was walking in, what could this be over? I went in, and he was in the middle of teaching a, a class, and at the back of the class were the other three fellas from the haircut appreciation day, right? <laughs> and they all looked back, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and then he waited till the class finished, we were all sitting there nervous, like, oh no, we're going to get it. And he, like, I think this teacher wanted to be a detective. Like, he, he didn't want to be a teacher, he wanted to be a detective. So when he got everyone out of the class, he sort of paced back and forth from the four of us. You know when you're trying not to laugh, but you're also shitting yourself? You yeah, know? yeah. And he goes, does somebody want to tell me? 
about tea and cookies. And we were like, that. and we call him cheekiest guy ever. It was coffee, actually. And he was like, ah! <laughs> so then he was like, right, you can either go and have detention or you can go and apologize to the teacher. So he's like, either you're, you're doing detention, German detention, or you're going to apologize to the teacher. And he went through his whole big rant. You're all going to fail. And this is his mama. This is your life and all. And we're like, all oh, right, okay. Sorry, so it's German detention. I know. German just, detention. You, you get <laughs> German oh, sassy. No. You don't want to know. Oh, maybe if you play your cards right, Glenn. Well, only for the teacher's pet. <laughs> so he, we make us do lines in German, you know. E, e, oh, kaba, that's good, yeah. Ich habe ein bad attitude, right? Something like that. So we went around and apologised to him. The teacher was like, don't worry, I loved it. It was one of your classmates that touted on you. And we were like, oh, happy bitch, right? So that was all well and good. He's uh, The year ahead was like, you'll feel German. The day came, the German G, uh, like GCSE was on a different board to the other one. So you had to go in separately to get your German. So then there's my year ahead, looking like the Grinch, sitting there, big smile on his face. I handed me my slip and he goes, hit the set, Dave. I told you so. And I went, oh, no, look down. <laughs> look back up to him. He goes, D for Deutsch. <laughs> and <then> so, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, you get me? So yeah, it was, that was a good time, but yeah, terrified. And have um, you needed German skills? Well, there was one time whenever I was a younger guy on holidays, met a couple of German ladies, and uh -oh. it worked. All I could say was, do be schwimmen, that means do you swim. And then, let's just say, next thing you know, we're in the Côte d'Azur, the rest is history. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. <sure. Okay. laughs> <laughs> Can you speak uh, any other languages? Maybe a wee bit of Russian, and maybe a wee bit of Spanish. How come? Well, I learned, I just, I've learned it, I learned a bit of Spanish. Yeah. And then Russian, I just, I was excited about it because it looks like you're dyslexic when you look at the alphabet, Cyrillic. It's all them funny symbols. Yeah. Um, so, so how do you, how, so hold on, how'd you learn it? Did, did you I'll listen up on my phone. All right, okay. Oh, I just thought okay, you just saw enough. the words were like, I speak German or Russian. Now, you, there's a space open enough for Irish League commentary for someone to do Russian. <laughs> so that's yeah, wide open for you to go into. Um, let's talk about like when you, in fact, let's not talk about when you met. Let's go back before. Glenn, being a psychic medium. Yeah. Doing readings. Mm hmm How, I, I don't know if that's just before, but what was the first ever reading you did or thing where you actually, where someone came to you and you sat down to do it? Um, I think I would have been about 25, maybe. I'd had a photography shop and I was always doing readings anyway. I was really interested in it from a young age. And it was that time of year where it was quiet and I was like, you know what, I'm going to build a page and I'm going to start doing readings. So I'd started doing that online and I never wanted to meet them face to face. It was always just like, send me a photo of you and I'll, I'll tell you what I can tell you. Through um, a photo? Mm-hmm. That went like that for a while, yeah. I was embarrassed to put my name or let on it was me. Right. So what were you known as before? A psychic Reader Belfast. And there was no photo. Psychic Glenn definitely is a better yeah. thing to I've only been Psychic Glenn for a couple of years. Since COVID, here's me, right, fuck it. So you came out yes. as Glenn. Mm -hmm. I, I came out as Glenn, it. Psychic Glenn, man. Now, I'm I'm a sceptical guy about yeah. about everything, but I also... Mm, stupid. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I would say in my, like, I don't have the capacity to learn a lot of new stuff. Yeah. I'm like an old dog, <laughs> right? So even if I wanted to be open to something, yeah. I, I can't because I, I, I'm full up <laughs> yeah. in my brain. Yeah. Right? But... The idea of being able to predict things and all that sort of thing, right? Let me ask you, when did you first know you've got a gift for this? Um, at a very young age. It was weird. Things would have happened. Like, I would have... They would have told me to do things, and then I would have did Who? it. The, the, the spurts. Like, they made me misbehave, kind of. Now, as a dad of two, if one of my sons said to me, they did something, I went, why'd you do that? And he said, the spurts, daddy. I'd move house. Yeah. Like that would... Well, they did. Were you not scared by they it? They did move when we were 13. The spirit's got to move? Well, no, mommy and daddy moved. Right. But I think it's because we were going to get put out because of the way I was getting on. Right. So by paramilitaries or spirits? Uh, paramilitaries. Mm -hmm. I would love to know, because when they come to the door and they go, you're in put out, they give a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're like, <laughs> what they say, you're fucking wee Harry Potter there, he's there. <laughs> well, it was all to do with the school too. Right. No. I do gooders. Reporting me. In the paramilitaries? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My fucking wee man came home with a wiggy board. Oh, fuck this wiggy board over here. What do you need a fucking wiggy board? <laughs> He's like... Because I remember doing a wiggy board whenever I was a kid and everyone being freaked out by it. And it, uh, even at that age, I was just not... I was like, this can't... This, I, uh, how can this be a thing? Do you know what I mean? I think people are really terrified of it, like... 
He is. Yes, no, I hate it. Absolutely. Me and him did a sketch for BBC, and in the sketch we were doing a Ouija board, and he would not be in the same room as it, and we had to trick the way it was filmed. Yeah. And Stop. then he, he was like, a day after, he goes, have you got rid of that Ouija board yet? Like, well, you know the, the next house. time to get me? Yeah. Uh, no, because you're that. a cheeky wee bugger, Glenn. You, will, you, you're you teasing me with the Ouija board. You want I me know. to do it, and I think you'll pop I think we can get me. the lottery numbers out of it for you, Dave. Do you think people are either spiritual or not do you think people have a yes some people either are or they're not and I think most of the ones that are, are comes from some sort of pain do you I think, think I am yeah oh yeah I'm spiritual mm-hmm. oh definitely really in your own way yeah oh yeah. well not that takes yeah. a, not to kick in the teeth there when you say in your own way <laughs> but in your own way you are in what way do you think like, I'm you're not outwardly spiritual but I guarantee you're probably like a priest in the house <laughs> hey <laughs> no <laughs> 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 So what are you, Glenn? Like when you sense energy about people, and auras. Yeah, read aura. When you met this guy, what do you think about it? Because I've known him for a long time, right? I think I know this guy inside out, literally. So he's very posh, remarkable, but he's funny and he's very genuine. Yeah, yeah that's that's good. You know? And I know that he needs to be taken more serious. You think he should be taken more? He seriously? wants to be huh? taken more serious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think he has a darkness inside? Mm. Not yet. Do you think I'm a psycho, Glenn? Do you think I can lose no, your rag? No, no, you're goody two shoes. Your teacher's pet and everything has to be sensible. I bet he just told you. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. now we can corrupt him. What about your, my cup? How's my cup gone from the first time you met me to now? What do you mean? Do you have more? Do have I given? Well, I think anymore? you're more confident now, for sure. You're definitely not afraid to just do it. Yeah, because cup, you know, like tea readings. Yeah, if you give, like, if you go into somebody very closed off, see, this is what I've learned. I've got to give you a cup. Yeah, you, you need to be open. You need to give them their cup. Let them read the tea leaves, so to speak. And then, otherwise, what do tea leaves have to do with it? Well, people read tea leaves sometimes. That's probably one of the oldest traditions is reading tea leaves. Right. But people used to read flames too. Families wouldn't have no TV or podcast back in the day, so they'd be gathered around the fire and went, "There's your wee loved one flickering away there." Thank God for TV. Yeah. Glenn, what do you think? What do you when you when you met me? What do you what do you think? What I was nervous. Right? Shana really was nervous. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Really. T- and as a side question, does anyone think his t-shirt too tight? Because I do. <laughs> no, I think it's nice. I just think it's, no, I think nice. it's nice. I think it's, it's not too tight. tight. Okay. No. Yeah. You sure. It's just like someone wearing a McDonald's t-shirt. though. It's weird. No, it's no, no. Burger is cool. But no, California. Um. So what? What did you? Uh, you were nervous. Yes. Yeah. Right. I I get that. That's understandable. But. What did you think about me energy wise? Did you think Energy wise This guy's mysterious or anything? You are you can, you hate a lot, you really hate a lot of your own energy. Sneaky? And you, what did you say? Not <laughs> sneaky because he's he's too 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 good to be sneaky kind of. Like you're afraid to put a foot wrong, really. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, what else? Tell me more, Glenn. Um you don't, don't be afraid to tell me scurry things. Like you that. um don't like being told what to do Correct. at all. Correct. Um, but your missus somehow has a way of Send things to you that makes your eyes light up. Yeah, and I, I'm easily then. tricked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like um, she'll go, she'll go. Will you clean those floors? And I go, no, don't tell me what to do. And she go, I bet you couldn't clean the floors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or she times me. Right. <laughs> always works. You want to see yeah. how quick I can go to the shop? Um, <laughs> did it? Has a reading ever gone? wrong or anything like if someone ever got really annoyed at you and went how dare you say that or people sometimes have not liked the truth and I've you're a nonce i've been called what? everything called everything and then two years later they're coming back glenn you were right yeah and how do you react in that moment i don't like to deliver bad news so i really pray and i ask the universe only to send me people that i have to say nice things to because i couldn't do the whole i'm not doom and gloom i'm not i'm yeah. not a doom and gloom person do you think all. if you started being doom and gloom that would bring you down it would. i guess yeah mm-hmm. What do you see for me and Dave's future? Independ- independently or together? Hopefully but together, know, but yeah. independently. Um, well, you, do you, you think need, there's a genuine you need to be acting, us? I think, think you need to be acting more, and I think maybe you might need to go to England a wee bit, to act a wee bit more, or down south, and it's fine. Um, him, I think he's going to be more on TV. I don't know. It's hard to know. But that I don't think you should move from here just yet, because you're going to try and fly before you can even crawl. Right. I so mean, we're getting, we're getting old. <laughs> We well, need to move soon. The older you get, the younger you feel. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like whenever I was twenty, I was like, "Fuck, I'm gonna be 20 You know, that's old. Like when I was younger than twenty. But you know, <laughs> now I'm like, "Shit, I'm thirty six. I feel great. The world's my oyster. I'll live till I'm fifty or something." <laughs> Glenn, when's Dave gonna die? Mm, if he listens to me, not till he's old. <laughs> that's that's fair. <laughs> 
Oh, what about him if he keeps poking the bear <laughs> this afternoon? <laughs> Soon. <laughs> the bear needs poked. <laughs> the, bear li- the bear likes getting poked. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. And that's fair. Pig. But I do think, and I do think that since uh, I've met you, I have been more open to energies mm. and things. Like I was saying earlier, I've adopted a new attitude where I'm not going to be Mr. Misery. I'm going yeah. to look positive with things, expect good rather than you know always expect the worst. I feel better for it. You know. Let's talk about because we're going to talk about the TV program in a bit. But yeah. let's talk about when you put yourself out there. And go, it's probably the same with comedy when you go, "Here's a thing I do," and you put yeah. the videos online doing it. Yeah. It, it does bring you just mentioned like negativity it does bring yeah. negativity from other people and things like that yeah so and you are very I'm, I'm probably similar to me in that when you put yourself online like you're just like here this is like this is me and if you like it brilliant if you don't there's yeah. nothing to do yeah. about it unapologetic for who you are yes. probably yes but when you started putting videos out and things like that did you get like were you getting like negative comments you getting mostly Christians sometimes would attack right Mm-hmm. They've caught me everything, really. Um, that one which actually, is ironically not very Christian to do, Glenn. Yes, Correct. Love rumor, thy neighbour. Somebody had started a rumour that I was doing witchcraft and all, and up oh. to Dablin, and I said, it's not Dablin, love balls deep. <laughs> <laughs> your, your balls were in the, Glenn, your balls were in the cauldron. This is it. <laughs> witchcraft? Have you done witchcraft? Mm, Glenn, Only Glenn. implied. I mean, I did. Be I done a wee spell on Putin last night. Here's me, right? I'm fucking sick of it. So I have. I've cast evil away. And wait up to see what happens. Thank <laughs> fuck. Give it a couple of days. <laughs> can, I, can, I ask, three days. can I ask a serious question? Why didn't you do that at the start? Um, <laughs> because I'm not a murderer. I wanted to wait and see if he would change his mind or something would happen. I, hear, I think he's pretty committed yeah. to this. Well, no problem. Is he fucking waits till I go and fight for Zelensky and he's like, not for stop it, Putin, stop it. I'd be surprised if he's even here by Christmas. Right. Fuck. <laughs> No, see witchcraft. Is there like, see, see when you're younger, you always heard rumors. You go to the sh- in the show, you just go to the giant's ring, right? And there was always rumors when you're younger. They do there's devil worshippers. In the well, world. I always heard it was a dog in place. That too. <laughs> that was the main thing. It was dog and don't be up there because there's all dog and rolling about the fields. Yeah, your dad says that that would definitely yeah, be true. That's why he, that's where he walks to the dog. He really doesn't have a dog. <laughs> He may have one up there, but dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's got a stunning leg. Where's Aaron Butler? He's got a leash. <laughs> what energy do you get off Aaron Butler? He's very fucking sensible. I'm scared to even read him because if you say something wrong, he flips. Yeah. Flips the table. Not allowed to mention it. Not allowed to mention anything. <laughs> oh, it's personal life. <laughs> Dave, can you cut that out? What's he like? You can't say anything to him. <laughs> I don't even know how he's doing comedy because he, <laughs> he takes offence. Really yeah. takes offence. Yeah. Uh, make sure you clip this. <laughs> Tag him in. He, there was chat on the podcast about the, the notion that he might have been dying as her and he, di- he didn't like it. He didn't like it. I know. What's wrong with dying your hair? Like? I know. Mm-hmm. Say it's stupid. He cares what people think you say. Yeah. And is that true freedom when you let that go? So hard. Glenn, is there like a you know when people, when you're younger, people do, oh, there's devil worshippers up there. Any field. Well, is I there, used to always think there was devil worshippers up Cave Hill and I had this memory when I was a child, but the memory didn't take place until I was 28 and mm-hmm. it was actually a drum circle and I took acid and it was up Cave Hill and I'm telling you, there was centaurs and everything. You know that ho- half horse, half human? Yeah. And all the drums and everything. It was crazy. I fell down the mountain and into my house. In your... <laughs> it was ter- I was holding my friend Marie's hand. I was terrified. Hey, Glenn. Because I couldn't let go. You Humpty Dumpty? <laughs> it was that day. <laughs> it took me a couple of days to put the pieces back together again. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, 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 there's so much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> did you dream that or did that? It actually happened. Right. Okay. But the memory that I had, it turns out we, we were the devil worshippers. M. Night Shyamalan, the house here. Who were the twist? centaurs? Well, it was... People, my friend actually was turned into a centaur, but they're all dancing around this fire and playing these drums. It was so weird. There's a couple of blocks. I don't even know where the drums I came from. Yeah, the drums aren't the weirdest bit. <laughs> ah, drums. All these drums. <laughs> this day, I don't know whether. Well, I know it was definitely real, but it was one of them days. It's like, it was like a dream, like. Yeah. Surreal. Now, you talked about acid. Yeah. What was that like? Because me and Dave are two boys that have never done anything like that at all. I okay, have to try it at least once. So my mum said to me once, she goes, see if you ever take drugs and you die because of it, I'm not burying you. And I was like, what? She goes, I just leave you there. 
You're rot. Pretty sure you could get addicted to acid or die. It would be impossible, really, to get addicted to something but like that. if you take acid, does it not make you do things like believe you're a centaur that can fly or something? Mm -hmm. stupid. Right, okay. So if you, would you, if you were to do acid, should to I do believe acid? A centaur. Like, if I was doing acid, should I do it in the car? And no, you should seat, definitely do it with me so I can still. control your head. Should you do it in the car? Not driving, like, just sitting there with a seatbelt. Not like, hey! <laughs> if you're with the wrong people, that could melt your head. Have you ever yeah. done ayahuasca or anything like that? No, but I would love to. I would love to go to Brazil and do that. Where did you take... I know a guy doesn't do art. Did you... <laughs> did, what was the first drug you ever... Like, mad drug you ever Wait. took? Weed was the first drug I ever had, I think. Yeah. Um, And I didn't take acid or anything until a wee bit later on. Where, did you, where did you take acid? Like Brazil? At an illegal rave was the first time. Right, where? In the forest, beaver. Right. Um, And then I've took it a few times, like... Um, but I like it better than mushrooms. Mushrooms are very, I don't know, made me cry and all. Now, mushrooms. does that, in your, does that, for you, does that help you connect to the it's, other world? Well, it helps me fix myself a wee bit. Like, it helped me, under the last two times I took it, I understood things that I shouldn't have understood. But then I was asking those questions. Do you think I'm wrong for being, skept uh, like, a sceptical person? No, I think scepticism is what actually awakens it. You've got to be curious. If you're not curious, then it doesn't matter to you. But if you're just here and you're not even asking why you're here, by all means... I genuinely, I don't. Yeah. I swear to you, I don't. I'm not trying to have the opposite yeah, opinion. Yeah. You'll kind of know. I am not. I have never been described as a deep thinker. No. You know, people are quite, like, you're right. Yeah. You should. I think you should. Where does the sky end? Yeah. yeah. Where all this stuff... Like, there's a lot to think about. Yeah. If you really think about everything. Yeah. Like, how could we be the only planet? And if the... But I always think... <laughs> I always think, no, I think there will be time for thinking about all that. But at the minute, you know. But see if there's, there's not a definitive answer or something. Yeah. Nobody can be right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, that's my view on like religion and other stuff. And is there a God? Is there no God? Is there witchcraft? Is there not? Nobody can go, there is or there isn't. Yep. It's open to interpretation. So until you're all proven one way or I'd rather just go for a walk. You're open, you know. That's, and that's how I view it with this. Like, I'm scared of ghosts. Yeah, but are they there? I don't know. Let's go and see. I've never, I've, ne I've never believed in ghosts ever since I was a kid. I, I've definitely been scared. Like if I hear a wee bump in the night, I'm scared, no. But I never thought that's a ghost. And even when I remember like family telling stories of a, a ghost came to me and that kind of thing, I have all, I just don't have the capacity to. And I'm not like. I'm not rude to anyone who would say yeah, that to me. I'm yeah. not. What are you talking about? I'm just like I just can't fathom that if you know what I mean but maybe I just haven't had an encounter or an maybe experience. it's a good thing because maybe if you did it would be a breakdown yeah you know what I mean because then you're the only one that's seen it too and then you tell us after that and next minute you're in parties burn yeah there you go and yeah. I was always taught that too my granny was always like shut your mouth watch right. what you're saying you know what I mean mm -hmm. what was the first spirit you think you ever met Reuben when I was three and it was in my bedroom and mom and daddy did not believe me and then one night they Woke up and it was standing over the bed. Ruben? Mm hmm Which I tr attribute to Rasputin later on. No, Rasputin was doing a lot of uh, fucking he was. back in the day. Mm -hmm. like, a it was it her? Tight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Potentially one of the sexiest. Blow his mind. Tell him you're Putin and Rasputin. I, Rasputin and Putin, I think it's the same sort of energy. Because I think put, Rasputin was put there to bring the monarchy down purposefully. And the same way Putin's are to destroy and, it now. And what's the end of Rasputin's name? Putin. Put me out the Russ or the Ras. Russ. Mm, there you go. Russell Brand is Russell a guy. Brand. Putin stuff where it shouldn't go. <laughs> uh, uh, my phone buzzed there. It's out because I want to uh, I want to ask you your opinion on this. Mars are going to remove bounties from its celebration tubs Good. in a pre-Christmas trial. Just a trial in, in the UK. I'd find 39% of the consumers want the coconut flavour treats acts for good now is this going to be the start of the end of the world you is see, this I people like bounty, but not in a celebrate not in celebrations for some reason but is this people interfering too much They're that's just the way celebrations things. are yep yep but then people are looking at money and cost and for making all these bounties and people aren't eating them they're just fucking in the bin but I think this will then drive the popularity of bounties through the roof because all of a sudden the bars. It, you're, you're a sh they're taboo you shouldn't be having it yeah men will be meeting up a giant ring yeah a lot of coconut bounties. Mm -hmm. Coconuts aren't, aren't cheap either. This is that. Mm -hmm. Bounties are... Do you remember a red bounty? Nope. Uh, I eat a dark chocolate. Mm. 
I dislike dark chocolate. All right, why'd you say it like I just don't like it. I like milk chocolate. Do you? <laughs> I like milk chocolate. <laughs> you're, weird, you're a weird guy. Is that how yeah. we joined? That's how we bonded. We're weird guys. No, we bonded because your dad was the guy that I went to the gym with. Yes. That's how we bonded. Yep. That was the exact reason. Because yep. we... This old guy used to go to my gym and always be naked. Was turned up on his on the gym floor. On the gym floor, yeah, just writhing on the pack deck, (laughs) off the seat. (laughs) But he uh, just appeared his show one day, and I was like, "What the hell are you doing here?" And he was like, "It was over the Edinburgh Fringe, yeah." yeah. So my dad was obviously over there to watch my show, and went and it was like, "Oh, I recognised," and I was like, "Come see these guys from here that have a sketch group." And then Dave saw the guy, the old man from the gym, was yeah. like... No, but I came to your show down in the basement, and he was there, and I was like, what a chance this, what are you doing here? And he goes, what are you doing here? It's my son. And I'm like... <laughs> it's my, my boyfriend. My boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was, and that was how we kind of, I think, bonded, yeah. really. From then on, we're like, this is, you know... Meant to be. Meant to be, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think we're in that place, we're only now, can I see him happy with another man? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I, that's taken a long time, Glenn. Yeah. It takes time, Shane, you see. Now, is there a way back for me? Are you st- cl- is it closed off? Is there a way in for me, or am I... Well, I've said we'll have to bring you on when we do a series. We need to bring you on to get you around scary places. I would, that would be something I would like to see. You, yeah. get, you get scared. Yeah, because so you're I'm not go- believing in ghosts. I'm, the, I'm going in the big man. Like, yeah. yeah. I jump easy, though. Like, yeah. I definitely jump <laughs> easy. <laughs> you got to stop doing that. And sometimes you'll do a sweet thing on a podcast where you go... <laughs> And it's what is James Brown yeah. <laughs> Alright then <laughs> But what's what's what scares you, Glenn? Mm. And by the way, if if you're doing psychic reading, what happens if you see if you saw something terrible in his future, would you tell him? It would depend on whether or not he has the ability to alter it. If not, then no. <laughs> so, so you could theoretically be doing a podcast with him and be like he's getting hit by a bus at two o'clock? Possibly, yeah. <laughs> But just tell him, and he won't leave the house. I'll get, I'll get into the car, seatbelt on, take acid, acid. <laughs> fly home. Yeah. But so have you ever had anything where someone's come in all busy and going, "Oh well, read me," and you've gone, "Oh no, fuck." Yes. <laughs> Don't know if you want. Sometimes, and see people that are like that. Sometimes, mm-hmm. and know by their whole fucking energy. Like if you're all, if you're manic when you come to fucking see me, you'll not be when you leave. Yeah. And if you're not manic, you will be when you leave. It right. works like that. And has there been anyone that you've just not lied to, but just kept some of the the information to yourself, and then just well, waited I've got to always died. be a responsible reader. So you've got to only say things that can't. I feel like it planting a seed in someone's head. You wouldn't want it to grow. Like let's talk about Final Destination, the movie. Do you think stuff like that can happen? So say yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so you oh, see wow. something happening, and would you like so say for like Shane said, you get hit by a bus. And you said to him, oh, no, don't go out into the road. That Like, stay inside or you'd hit yeah. by the bus. And he's like, okay, I'll stay inside. Would then so, would, would the Something roof fall in and get him? Yeah, right, okay. yeah. So that, I always think about that and, like, the sliding door theory and the butterfly effect and all. And, the little, like, even me doing this now, that will affect the rest of my entire life. Yeah. The fact that I've gone, you know what I mean? If I didn't do that. Like I, I would be doing something different, you know yeah. what I mean? And I think those tiny wee minutiae can affect. And that's why... I, he scares the shit out of me sometimes when we go on these trips and things and the ghosts and I'm like oh no like see we were upstairs and that Grace Neal's together yeah it's in the it's in the the, the, cl- the glass where did the glass come from and I how did know. it break that no was the idea. scariest bit for it's I like a light bulb that. but it just popped out of nowhere and it looks when you watch it back like like I've broke something you've done something yeah, yeah. Or I, but I know you haven't and that was the bit that I went ah don't like it's it it's funny here. but yeah it is the show is called Lesser Spooked Ulster um I, I thought it was brilliant. I text Thank you, me. and you know, like, we'll be very honest yeah. with each other. If he does yeah. something I don't like, vice versa, we'll just yeah. be honest. He'd phone me and go, shit. <laughs> <But> he, <laughs> he this time. I yeah. said it was brilliant. I yeah. thought it was really good. I think he's brilliant together. I think it was very well shot, well made. Don't know how, who you got Superb to do sound. Um, the well. sound was unbelievable. Big shout out to GK. Um, so, <laughs> Jer- Sinn Féin's Jerry <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> yeah, he jumped on board. Yeah. Spurt <laughs> wouldn't be anywhere near it. <laughs> 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 Spirit's getting put out, um, but yeah, and and it's gone down well. People are enjoying it. Yeah, it seems to have gone down really well. Where would you nice. Where would you like to go? Because it's kind of for anyone who hasn't seen the show yet, we'll put a link in the description. But it's you two kind of ghost hunting. It's it, but it's not ghost hunting. It's you're you're going to places to try and feel a presence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where would you like to go? There's a lo- load of loads places. of places. 
Like there's, there's loads a, of places that we need to see whether or not they have the spook factor. I've got an in for some tunnels now. Because mm-hmm. you remember I talked about We Are Connor on from yeah. Document Belfast. Who was I'm in t- the show? I know. Yeah. And I'm talking about yeah. tunnels. Yeah. And, and people, everyone's taking the piss out of me. I knew by putting that out there into the world yeah. mm-hmm. that I wanted to experience tunnels. I knew people would come to yeah. me and say, yeah. listen. So Spirituality. Shane's Castle. Yes. I've been, I shouldn't have said. I have... <laughs> Someone has said they can get me into a secret venue if I don't say where it is. Yeah. And they're underground tunnels under a castle. So I'd like to go there. I would. I will only go on the show yeah. if you take me to, I want to go tunnel underground type yeah. things. Yes. Underground that. would be good. Yeah. Like there's there's well-known places about obviously the Crumlin Road Jail. It's yes. apparently haunted. There's tunnels there yep. under the courthouse. Been. Um, which, but I, I want to go. There's a place, I think it's, I don't know how to say it. It's, I think it's called Glen Ullin. And apparently there's a, a, a spirit called the Abertac, this monster. The Abertac? Yeah, and he was had to be buried. He came back from the dead and all, like the Undertaker, and had to get reburied by like a druid and had to be buried upside down. Phil McCool ended up putting him back. Phil the man. She's doing a bit of in the whole eye, apparently. <laughs> he kept getting out and he was draining. He was draining all the women's blood. In the end, I had to keep giving him the blood. But was Phil McCool doing that? Would he put people in the hole? Regular. No, apparently he's there and you can't move the rock or else he'll get out. I says we need to move it. It sounds like a Marvel film. What's a rocket to do with? Yeah. The rock is keeping them buried. Was there something um, special about Finn McCool putting it in the hole? I think in the, hole? the witches and the people had to get Finn McCool to help. He's probably get rid of bucked after just dealing with a colony. He's like, no, <laughs> fuck, let's go. <laughs> and deal with it. Yeah, yeah and he got buried upside down so he couldn't get out. I'd yeah. like to try and find old famous people like Finn McCool and stuff yeah, like that. Like, yeah. let's go and try and get them. Yeah. Find them. Yeah, Rathlin also, would be good. Well, no, don't even start. Rathlin is home of one of the biggest massacres in the Irish yep. history. I know all there's, this. Yeah. And there's a castle there and there's like people Robert women and children thrown into the sea. Yep. Like years ago. So I think that'd be fun to go to Rathlin. <laughs> yeah. <that>. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Disrespectful but, to the families. Yeah. Can you do an apology? Yeah, sorry Rathlin. Our the historical Rathlin families. And sorry to Rathlin families, that was offensive. A lot of love for Rathlin. But there's a lot of <laughs> Fun there, yeah. and uh, <laughs> hey man, it happened like six centuries ago. But I don't know, still have families, check out. you know. Yeah. And the um, <laughs> the see, I've I've been away over the weekend in Dublin, and my head is just history. Just you said history, that like you know? an outer universe. Yeah, oh. I've been in, I've been in Dublin. Yeah, but I was I went to Dublin. I drank five double fucking Red Bulls at Robbie Williams. I went boogaloo, and <laughs> been hung over. And then the next day, I went to Kilmainham Jail. To learn all about the history. Robbie Williams mind. again. Yeah. How Robbie was that? Robbie Williams. Robbie Williams. Yeah. Tremendous. Robbie Williams. <laughs> Robbie. <Yeah. laughs> I was exactly like that. That's how you said it. I just yeah. Robbie Williams. I had an outer body experience at Robbie Williams. Actually, I was standing in queue to get my sixth double Vulcan Red Bull, and then a wee voice me came along, and went, "Don't do it, mate." And I went, "Yeah, you're probably right," and I didn't. I got a cider instead. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And just that. Do you want boogaloo? That was a good show. Yeah, good show. What was did they do all the hits or was there anything yeah. you're going oh why didn't he no because I know like a, well, a week or two ago you and Karen sat here and smugly insulted Robbie he sold sure. out the venue still the world's greatest showman to this day the guy needed to have injections in his back he could barely stand but he shook it up when he went on stage and he gave it Glenn when was the last time you went boogly um, in any sense actually two days ago yeah uh, yeah yeah yeah. I went to my friends for a null and had too much to drink and then Mm-hmm. And you went. Yeah. I did. I went mad. I went mental. Funeral? Yeah, yeah. My granny and all told me never to ring her again. Everything, everything all happened. So you you got on it and then r- rang went your mad. Granny? No, well, this all happened leading up to it. And then when I what's your tipple? Usually Morgan's, Morgan's and Coke usually. Okay, but do you find? Because I definitely find myself like I can pull it out. When Pardon? I need to. Like, well, no, no. You were told you're not. That's oh, speaking of that, I have another story of pulling out in Dublin. Shit, right? This is one of the most awkward moments, right? We were walking along just opposite from the GPO, right? So in Conley Street or wherever it is. And we're walking by and Catherine goes to me, look, look, what's that? look at that wee boy. Look at that wee boy all, all on his own. And I was like, looked over and his boy must be about five and he was standing just in the corner all by himself. Oh, no. And I was like, oh no, is he okay? So I was sort of went over towards him and uh, I was like, you are, and then I just heard, no, what are you? Oh. He was taking a piss in the corner so I went over and his family were just watching him taking a piss we thought he was there by himself I walked over and I was like oh I was just having a look and he was like what was like, nope. so I just they were thinking I'm just this big pedo coming over like oh he's taking a piss that's a gander when really it looked like you know we boy in the Blair Witch Project standing in the corner did I tell you about the time I was like hanging out with a mate when oh, I was no. with <laughs> 11 or 12 
and we were in. You no, know, you don't hang out with mates when you're 11 or 12. <laughs> you're playing with your friends. <laughs> I was hanging out with my mate, unless they're 40. I was just hanging out. What <laughs> <laughs> the hell's the Angels chapter yeah. of North Down? No, I am. Um, it was in Bloomfield in East Belfast, and you know, a friend was like, Come on, right? I, this is where I hang about. You know the way you'd go somewhere where people hung up? We'd run about here, and you'd yeah. just go there. I didn't know the area. I needed to piss. It was a Sunday afternoon. I was wearing gold Nike tracksuit bottoms, just to give you a bit of context. I needed a wee wee. So I was like, I'll go to these alleyways. You know, nobody there. Sunday afternoon, there was nobody about. I made sure nobody about. But I was unfamiliar with the architecture of the area, and it turns out everyone has doors that open onto the alleyways, like back doors. Uh-huh. I, li- I just started to piss. A guy, Dave size, with a bald head, two gold hoop earrings, opened up his door and went, the fuck do you think you're doing? And I just started pissing. I was uh-huh. like, ah, sorry and all. And he goes, get the fuck away from here. And I was ah. And he goes, no. <laughs> I had to go. And at that age, you piss with your uh, track swells around your ankles. <laughs> I had to do this wee waddle. And it felt like the piss would not end. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was like Austin Powers when he's getting the thought out. And it just wouldn't end. And I don't know. Oh, yeah, the wee boy taking piss in Dublin. I don't know how that came did, did the guy stand watch until you left? He watched me walk off and the piss never ended. It was just a, tra- <laughs> a trail of despair. And my tears were doubling it. You know, it was just so bad. Um, so, yeah, the TV show is it's on iPlayer for anybody who wants to go back and watch it. I think it's mm-hmm. fun. I think people will enjoy it. It's really yeah. nice. It's a nice time. Do you have any uh, arguments filming it between you or anything? Like, no. do you sp- do you no. speak or anything? I think no. you just will get that. But I I see that, Glenn. Glenn, can I just say, I see that. No, I don't see. That's so what I'm. That's what I'm getting. That and it'll be fine. But it'll be just we. You wee know what? And see, and it'll make you stronger. See, in terms of like working with Jules, he's a very easy person to work with. Mm-hmm. Very respects others. Turns up in time. He's nice. Turns up in time. Yeah. What time you hear it? Yeah, oh, uh, I'm actually here a day early, mister, Oh yeah. for your podcast, thank you. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I changed the day. Yeah. <laughs> but so, you were two minutes late. I know, but I had to reorganise all my childcare and everything else, but I'm here. Okay. So yeah, it's very easy to work with and, oh, and a pleasure. And Glenn, say this goes to series and people love it. Say Netflix come to you and go, here's... But see, I think that it's going to be something like that streaming ways. I, I can already see that. Right. Uh, fingers crossed but I was going to say if there was another if they came to you and said we need a different show from you two and there was a blank checkbook what would you two like to like do because it, it works it just works the two of you but where would you like to be I would actually be, would you be like to really keen to see what would you do if, it, if Netflix were like you are doing something together five what million would be? I think maybe going around the world maybe fighting ghosts that are linked with dead celebrities even something like that <laughs> We'll try and bring them back. Who know what happened? <laughs> so like, imagine you do. Two <laughs> <laughs> yeah. pack doing Glastonbury back. next year. Well, a lot of their spirits. Well, maybe Marlon Monroe. Fuck, sick, bring her back. Yeah, she doesn't really do. But I don't think you can. Surely you can't break. You can't bring them. Well, back. You can't do a reanimation. I don't think you would be fucking arrest it. No, oh, she's just back from the album too, isn't it? Really? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I thought she was under her umbrella. <laughs> That's. <laughs> But if you were to bring back one celebrity, who would you want to bring? Like, who's your favourite? Do you mean just feel their spirit again? Well, we could go to their graves. Because what I'd love to see, and this would be cool, imagine you sitting on a grave, and all of a sudden you're like, I feel it, I feel it. Jamona! <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see you with Michael Jackson. <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> I no, keep, that. keep him in the ground. You know who I'd bring back? Prince. Love Prince. Yeah. I feel Prince hasn't finished doing what he should have done. Well, what celebrities were you saddest at when they died? Prince, mm. Philip. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, just <laughs> imagine any time you talked about Prince, you meant <laughs> Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Prince was such a great singer. Yeah, I love most beautiful girl in the world. No, no, he didn't. Uh, no, just the family events. Really, <laughs> he stopped everyone. <laughs> The, I think uh, Diana, I was too young to feel really sad about. Yeah. But I can no, see you've been caught up about that. No, I enjoyed actually that because I got to break the news to my family and I was all busy about it. How did you do like you I was it up? a youngish boy. Um I must have been probably about eight or nine, maybe ten, I know. Right. But I got up early to watch uh, cartoons and eat cereal and my mum and dad had friends around, which now I realise blocked. You know, they had their friends around for drinks and all and they stayed over. I went in with Stringers? I mean I don't know, maybe, maybe. And I went in and was like, guess what? 
So you're sassy about it? Mm-hmm. Because I wasn't able to watch my cartoons because it was just fucking news on. I was raging. I was like, where's fucking Ren and Stimpy? And all? Oh, put a arm yeah. on back on. <laughs> I went down and was like, Mommy. She was like, what? Yeah, Mommy. And then she went, what? Because Princess Diana's there. Six people in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> Where is she? Oh, there she is. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> Give me a stick. <laughs> but... Like talking to the yeah. Chilean miners. <laughs> no, they're all of age. Oh, the swingers party. Please. Please. But, yeah, I remember telling them. And they were like, you know, like the, the parents in Home Alone. Yeah. When they're like, they realise they're late. They're like, what? Let me the TV on. <laughs> and then they couldn't believe it. And I was yeah. like, well, I did tell you. Yeah. Don't spoof. Glenn, will it be harder for you to do readings and do this the more well-known you get, the more you do podcasts and TV type stuff? Do you think then people will be going to like, not catch out, but like they're more going to like meet you instead of going yeah, to the Yeah, I really like that a wee bit, but I have clients that have read maybe like will come and see me every couple of years. And I think some of my older clients have been there and keep coming just because of what I do, really. Mm-hmm. But other people like my attitude and it's like the way I am and are drawn to me that way, I think. See the people that don't like, is there a comment that people could write that would like get in your head or are you just... It's Is not it, really it like, it's, I'd be scared of my family seeing any comments. I can handle anything, but if my family seen something, it would hurt them, I think, more. I remember once someone said, does he, talking about me, they said, Is, does he have, does he have a, ever so slightly a lazy eye? And I wasn't right for about a year. Really? I was, but always... Because I find that who gets more annoyed is, is my wife, Catherine. Like, if she sees a negative comment, she'll be raging. Yeah. And she'll be like, I'm going to get them. I'm like, you don't need to get them. It's all right. Like, they're yeah. just, you know, they don't even have a face they can put in their wee picture. Like, so don't worry. They're just yeah, yeah. their own problems. And what are they saying? Like, oh, it's her and no, all. What I remember <laughs> once was, and his teeth and all. Oh, but there was this, was just one guy. I like, to stick my head between like, his teeth. You know where you can see, like, if you click on a comment, how many times I've commented on this channel? Yes. This one guy, like, commented on about eight of my videos, all the same stuff. And I'm like, they're all different videos. So why, if you hate it, you come, oh, let me see that again. Whoa, you know, is he, why is he watching it? Yeah. You know, it's weird. It's just, yeah. you just don't know what people are at. Like. Is it, do you think it's the worst it's ever been, all that? Or do you think it's actually all right? I you know, mean, I, think, I think everything's taken a full circle now. I think initially, people are now get going... Trolls are just way arseholes. Like, I think if you're a troll, you're fucking biggest loser you can get. Yeah. I think sometimes if you see someone say a comment, you read the comment and it might get to you. But then you go and click on someone's Facebook profile and you go look at them. They've got like a wee, we support the NHS, rainbow around their wee face when they're sitting there. And then like, and the next, you go to the next photo and it's, you'll never walk alone. And it's like, oh, fucking losers. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, you know, the worst people. Why are you looking at my dad's profile? Because <laughs> he always fucking trolls me. <laughs> <laughs> and always oh, about as small a dick is and only he knows that Glenn also um, in terms of like online and being more visible with podcast TV type stuff yeah. what about are you because me and Dave are obviously all bored married guys married guys married guys we're a married <laughs> guys please but you're like would you be would you be thinking what if someone you know is like messy DM and you're dropping into your DMs because they're seeing you on TV or on podcasts or anything like that. And maybe their intentions aren't what they should be, if that makes sense. That's most people anyway. Meaning in a romantic sense. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it happens anyway. Mm-hmm. But so how do you spot that from? I just, I know deep down. And I'm very fussy too. Like, I'm like, I know what I want now. Because I remember years ago, I'm going to ask you what that is in a second. When Nordy Shore was out, mm-hmm. you were just innocently messaging someone and they were like, Screenshot saw it. I wonder if anything bad. Yeah. It was like Benzie from Nordy yeah. Shore loves it and all. Yeah. So like, I'm well, just wee boys, like, you know? <laughs> like of age, <laughs> like, just young guys, <laughs> not like yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so what what are you said you what are you looking for? Um, someone that understands me and someone who's unique in their own way. I yeah. think maturity too is good. Yeah, but not too mature. Mm. You need to still have fun. You need someone who's like, we'll go to Thunderland. You know. I know, but they need to be mature as well. Right. Yeah, but I think that's the thing too, isn't it? Like, you, you're now, with our age, I think there, beco- there comes a contentness with who you are as a person. I think when you're younger, you're like, I want this one, and you're older, like, I just want to be happy, like, you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. if somebody can come on board and add to the happiness, tremendous, but you don't want to be changing. Yeah, they have to fit in with yeah. 
who you are as a See, person. See, I'd be scared of a change in my whole life. I need someone to come into my life, not the other way yeah, around. because I remember you told me about a guy who was saying, he was like, well, why are you going here? Why are you doing that? And it's like, what's well, my job? You know, it's what I yeah. do. So come in and understand. Like, that was a lucky, for whenever I met Catherine, I was at a gig, so she kind of knew what it was about. Didn't find me funny or like me, but, uh, you know. Heckled, actually? You know, yeah, I say quite a lot. And, and really, Through a lighter, is that right? Yeah, and at one point before, you know, I actually saw them go into the gig, I was like, they're going to be fucking nuisance. And they were. But again, I'm going to have vengeance forever. Still being a nuisance. But you know what I mean? It's like you need to know what people are like rather than, well, why are you doing this or why are you doing that? And it's like, well, this is the way I do. And you can fit around it. You know what I mean? Work into it. And yeah. yeah. But yeah, I suppose that kind of thing of knowing yourself more as you get older, that definitely, like I think even when we started doing things together, mm -hmm. uh, comedy, <laughs> comedy things, we uh, were just wee weird young guys. Yeah. You don't know yourself at all. You're like, oh, maybe I should be this or should I be that? Or mm -hmm. try and your style, your comedy style is always changing. And yeah. then eventually you hit a point where you're like, all right, maybe I'll just be me then. Yeah. And I think, but that's part of it, isn't it? You sort of have to. Embracing your weirdness is what, and the things that make you weird. Because I, I think with comedy, I think it's a lot of problems with some maybe newer comedians now. They think doing stand up is really cool and edgy, and it's not. Nah, you know what I mean, like snap. you go backstage, it's so <laughs> naff. Guys, like there's a girl came backstage to pug, at Pugs to get a photo with me and Mick one time, and we were talking about hand moisturizer. Mick was like, "Get that on, that's really good." Aloe vera, and I was like, "Well, it's soft in the elbows and all." I was in the middle of like, yeah. She went around and was like, yeah. "What's what's what, what's happening here?" We're just, we're just talk like because in, in people's head they're like, "Oh, they must be out there. They're smoking, they're drinking, they're having parties." You're going to work. You're going to do ten minutes. You're yeah. all you do. You turn up. You be nervous for ten minutes. You go and go. I oh, wasn't that bad. And yeah. you go home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Showing it's each not. other pictures. Oh, what's, yeah. what do you do? Your one now. Yeah. Kind of um, Glenn, being around Dave and being around the podcast and being in one else studios here. Yeah. People must ask you. You you're going to try stand up. I've never had this conversation with I, you before. I don't know if it's something. Well, nobody's asked me it really before, but I think I would maybe. I would, yeah, I would definitely maybe like to do something someday. You know what I think? I think you would do a good one man show. I think that would yeah. be fun. I yeah. think that would be yeah. a good show. Because again, I think because you have a bit of you need to keep a wee bit of yourself mysterious. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think you need to That's it. true. But if you did a one man show, I think you could put out what you want. Because if yeah. you you you're very good at retorts, so I, I could see you just going on just, just roasting hecklers for an hour. Yeah, yeah. I think but I think a one man show about but you would, I think, would be very good as well. Okay. Um, so what? What's 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 next for you guys? What's happening? We don't know really. What's we're just you're doing a press on, tour. Keep on, yeah. We're going to just keep on trucking and see how the response is. But listen, if there's a guy that knows how a taster's received, it can be received really well and still means nothing. So yeah. you know, I think with this, I'm going to be like very what? hopeful. Like William Vaughan's deal for talk's sake. You know, we made a real good blap. Did really well. Didn't go anywhere. So it's yeah. one of those things you need to just kind of. You know, would you have wanted best. the success of something that was going to be a wee bit political like that? I don't know. To be fair, Glenn told yeah. me it wasn't going to go anywhere, but he yeah. said not to tell you. Yeah. No, but I think, of it, and, and, and I do think this is the thing that you have taught me most, is to put the, the positive energy out and hope for the back. So I'll just hope for the best. And again, whenever you get bad news, normally if I got that news that it wasn't going, I'd be raging. But I was like, well, I can't, can't change it. It is what it is. Let's hope for the best. It was a good opportunity that we had. I'm very grateful for it. And um, maybe brought us to here. So hopefully now there'll be more yeah. um, down the line. And I think I always feel like with what we have done, there's, there's so many more places we can go. And again, because it's not like written or scripted or anything, you don't know what will happen. And I think it could be quite funny. I to, think it could be really fun. Glenn, see, speaking of energy, I get negative energy around not feeling like I don't have time to do the things I need to do. Yeah. So what can I what can I do to help that? You need to learn to be more selfish and just do what you want. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> not a mean a lot of people in this room <laughs> saying that might well, not be possible well you're the boss Shane at the end of the day you have to put your foot down yeah and Can just, and just, what, and just tell yeah. people the way it is yeah mm -hmm. and you'd be more of a boss bitch yeah it definitely. sounds like you're telling be sassy or what she doesn't I face. feel like I rein in my sass I'll be honest I feel like I used to be sassier yeah. and now I'm way more like easy going <laughs> I think you need to be more sassy don't bring it back out because yeah. it's there like. I think it needs to come out Right, I think that's enough, Glenn. Thanks. <laughs> Don't wrap up my podcast. <laughs> he's, he's giving you. He's getting on like Butler today. You're getting too. <laughs> Glenn, is there is there a showbiz feud between you and Butler? No, but Aaron's just. I, I've seen him try and make something of his life. Or he was away doing. <laughs> you were in America, and then there he was away doing a wee speech, and I just thought, God love you. But at the same time, he's a nice wee boy, thirty three now. Mm -hmm. Do you know? And that's all really we know about Aaron because he won't fucking be real. 
And do you think there's a is it is it is he scared or is there a darkness in there? Or is he there won't reveal his sensitivity because he thinks people will find it weak, but they'll not. Yeah, they might like it. Yeah, do so I mean? you think he needs to come out with his real self more? He needs to not be afraid of being vulnerable. Okay. Yes. He's yes. gonna hit you after watching this. <laughs> <He's gonna laughs> fucking, uh, and then cry. <laughs> he doesn't watch us. I know he doesn't. Like Goodwill Hunting. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, well, guys, thanks very much for coming on, Glenn, Dave. I'm the show. On, like, I'm not joking. Like. We d- I'm being serious like if, if I think something he's done bad and vice versa yeah, we'll yeah. tell each other and if it's good we'll say and I message you as soon as I watch it in here and I was like that looks brilliant mm-hmm. you're very good in yeah. it I'd want to see more I think, it, I think it's excellent I think it's really good um, yes, so people much. should watch it it's what ni- nine minutes or something yep it's on iPlayer the link's in the description yep so and then we'll get to make we'll get to make more stuff as well yeah and um, maybe you'll get to come in the tunnels with us as well I, I would nothing yeah. would make me happy and we'll make break a camera tunnels. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Good I'll come in your tunnels no worries yeah um, <laughs> just doesn't make sure they're not flooded <laughs> um, but guys thank you very much thanks for listening and watching patreon.com slash TV podcast watch a waterfront show the bonus episode we're doing a world cup watch along I need to ask you if you can come and do that mm-hmm. um, 20 21st 21st of this month we're doing a world cup watch along I think it's England Iran we're going to do yeah uh, oh, just my Patreon team. Yeah, which one? Around. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to do that? Yeah. Glenn, do you like football? Mm, don't mind that. It's okay. all right. All right. Who do you think is going to win the World Cup? No Qatar. idea. Go Who's on, have a, have a go. Who's playing? All the countries in the world. Pick one. Don't know. I don't even, I really don't know. Yeah, Argentina, I'll say that. I'll tell you, you what, great joke. Yeah. <laughs> Here, if they win it, I'll I'll go back on everything I've said and be like, fuck it, I was wrong about it all. There you go. <laughs> Genuinely, probably will win it. David, do you think? I think Argentina as well right now. <laughs> Other than Argentina, I'm you know what, I'm gonna say Qatar. I'm gonna say England. Right. I think England will win it and then that's gonna be see me until I die just hearing about it. Yes. Which is gonna be Glenn soon. Not soon. Because no. he's got plenty of work to do. There you go. He's but as soon as that's done. <laughs> yeah. All right. Once I've retired, dead. <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for listening, thanks for watching. See you later.